What's up? What's good? Wolf is here. We're doing a Let's Talk. In this video, we're talking about hero shooters. Uh, so, let's just dive right into this. Now, before I get into the three games, the three newest games of hero shooters, quick couple really big time mentions. And I think these games probably paved the way for the hero shooters that we are seeing on consoles and the PC today, which are... Uh, one is one of the biggest ones, Team Fortress 2. I think that a lot of these games kind of spawned off from Team Fortress 2 just from the fact that Team Fortress had, uh, you know, these characters that were classes, very similar to what we see nowadays. Uh, another one that was, it, it was not a very good game, but the idea and the ideas that it brought, I think probably transitioned into making better games. Uh, especially for console because it was one of the first ones to really um, really bring something you know kind of fresh to the console and that is Brink. Now I know Brink like I said I know it's not a good game and whatnot there's a lot of people that didn't really like it. Uh, me I like the ideas I just didn't like the execution I thought the game was kind of boring in that aspect of it. So then I mentioned those. Uh, what do I think of FPS's that are made from MOBAs that are called hero shooters? Um, to me, I kind of think that it's it's like consoles version of a you know a strategy game or an RTS real time strategy game. Uh, so. Pretty much the the companies they took something like Smite, something like Dota, something like League of Legends that you can't really do that well on the console because you only have so many buttons on the controller, and they took that and remixed it into what is the biggest genre of game on console, arguably the biggest genre of game on console for competitive play, which is I think we can all agree is shooters. Fighting games are up there, but shooters run the console market for competitive gameplay. If you're looking for something really big to watch in esports and everything, uh, what well you go to, usually it's Call of Duty. One game they've tried to bring over is CSGO. It didn't really hit that well because CSGO is mainly made for you know keyboard and mouse and everything on the PC. Understandable. I played CSGO on the, uh, on the Xbox 360. I enjoyed it, uh, I, but for me, mostly it's because, you know me, I've, I've said this before, I'm not very good with keyboard and mouse, so just being able to experience CSGO and see what it was all about made me want to get it on the PC, uh, even though my PC doesn't run it very well, uh, but you know, just being able to experience it and check it out, it felt so much like an old school Call of Duty, which I think that's maybe what Call, Call of Duty 4 um if, if you play CSGO and then play remastered Call of Duty 4, to me, those games are like one the same. Like that's where Call of Duty kind of got its you know footing from was CSGO. Uh, and a lot of people try and put those two games against each other. Anyways, back on track of Hero Shooters. So, sorry, I'm just a big Call of Duty guy. So with the fact of, as I said, like PC style strategy, real RTS is being made for console. I think it's a good idea. I think it's fun. Uh, it brings something, an age old genre of games from the, uh, from the PC over to the console. Uh, does it work with the, with the console fan base? I mean, RTS is something like Smite that was brought over or Paragon over on the PS4 that was brought over. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just I find those games kind of struggle on console just because people want more of a up in your face, always going Twitch style, like just shoot everything in sight, do everything that you can. And I think that the RTSs are just a little bit too slow paced for console gamers, just in the fact that there's a lot of um, kind of inventory management. And then also on top of that, like the, the battle, you have to run so far to finally get into a battle. I think console users are just way more used to and prone to going for a game that is like constant, just one battle right after the other, every 30 seconds, every 60 seconds, you know, every 10 to 30 seconds. 
that's you know what console people really look forward to i uh, i would also say not too much of a grind sometimes you know pc games can get very very grind heavy i mean i think about like warframe and uh the new star trek game that just came over and oh uh, there was one other one that I was playing also and in those mmo style online only games even destiny kind of does it too uh and and destiny's actually made by the console developers but it was so grind heavy that people were like i got too many other games to actually check out and i think that might be the reason why people really just want very quick uh action in their games because there's so many games on the consoles that you know people they will sit down uh and a lot of people you know for console gaming uh a big percentage of console players just like to sit down and have some fun whenever they get the chance. So, you know, I won't call them weekend warriors or anything because, you know, I'm, I'm a console guy, but I'm a hardcore console gamer. Uh, you know, I do a lot with that. So, is Hero Shears console's answer to MOBAs? I would say definitely, absolutely. We have seen Overwatch has hit so big, it's really brought in a new genre into, or not new genre, because like I said, Team Fortress 2 came out, you know, a while ago. Uh, and... I think that Overwatch is really kind of like the next evolution of Team Fortress 2, which is very, very cool. It's it's bringing that, uh, that genre into light in a big way. Now, a couple other games uh, that, you know, they get packaged in with the Hero Shure genre, of course, because all three of them are Hero Shures. Uh, there is the brand new one that Cliffy B, the guy that was not solely responsible for Gears of War, but a big, big reason why Gears of War came to console, which was, uh, you know, just Xbox's exclusive, just bragging rights over the other consoles and everything, and even PC until Gears got brought over to PC fully. Uh, but Lawbreakers, made by Cliffy B and his team, his new team, new development team, uh... I haven't played it yet. It looks good. Uh, there is a lot of air fighting in it. It seems like gravity anomalies are all over the place where gravity just all of a sudden just, you know, it's like this loss of gravity and everything's floating and, and whatnot. Uh, there was a lot of swinging, kind of like Spider-Man style swinging where, you, you know, you hit the grapple hook, you swing around the building and everything. I kind of like the look of that more than the Titanfall style grapple system where you just shoot it and then you you know you fly over. Uh, it it looked like a lot of fun. Like you could swing off from the wall and do 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 you know shoot people and everything. Looked crazy. Looked awesome. Uh, and from what I've seen video wise and review wise, it actually worked really well too. There was a lot of people that actually died from just trying out the swinging mechanics and checking out the map and everything because the map looked so good. Uh, which was really cool. Uh, Lawbreakers is a FPS, so if now now that's kind of interesting to me because Cliffy has been working on uh, third-person shooters, as you know, with Gears of War for so many years, and he goes into FPSs, and he didn't want to. I I heard Cliffy say himself he did not want to make something that was the normal, just everyday, run-of-the-mill first-person shooter. He wanted to make something brand new and different, which is, you know, Cliffy B's way of doing things. Make it a little bit different, but still keep it, you know, in the same uh, atmosphere as other games. Uh, and, and keep it basic, but also add extra layers to it that make it really fun. That's the reason why I like Cliff. You know, he's uh, he can be very outspoken at times, can be kind of funny, can make fun of some of the stuff that you like, but you got to give the man credit. He knows how to go in and really do his thing when it comes to uh, game design and all that. Uh, so, different characters for different classes. Uh, so, you have main set characters for different class types, a lot like an Overwatch or a lot like a Team Fortress. Uh, I, I find that to be pretty cool. Uh, maybe, I think that might be, though... Where it's a good idea, I think that's where Overwatch is kind of going to have one up over Lawbreakers. I mean, there seems to be a lot of characters in Lawbreakers on both 
the the law, which is the police side of things, and then the breakers, which is like the outlaws, the 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 troublemakers of the game, because it's you know that's why it's called law breakers because it's you know cops versus robbers, age old idea, but in a brand new you know coat of paint over it, should be fun, should be cool. And that's the other thing too. That's what makes the character list double in size is because you have different characters playing the roles on each side. I'm not quite sure if you can have more than one type of character on a team at the same time like Overwatch, which I did really like that in Overwatch also. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a fan of Overwatch. I, I do, uh, I have actually been playing a lot of it on the console lately. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been really getting into Overwatch, just picking their favorite characters and going. Um... So far, also a very big thing to note is, and and this is kind of weird to me because Cliff, I know he invited uh, Microsoft down to check out the game. For some reason, it's a PC exclusive. And the way Microsoft has been running everything, when you buy a certain, you know, um, a Windows Studio game, I think it is, or something like that, uh, like Killer Instinct and Quantum Break and other titles. When you buy it on the Xbox, you get a free copy on the PC and vice versa. So then, it, as Phil Spencer has been saying, he wants to bring both of the platforms together as much as possible. Possibly also bring PSN together with you know. So it's like all gamers are underneath one roof, you know, working together to make s- some pretty cool magical moments happen. To me, I find that to be absolutely awesome. I love that I, that way of thinking, those ideas that have been brought to the table, but who knows, you know, it's up to Sony, play ball there. Um, so, next one I want to go into, Battleborn. Battleborn, I played the beta of it. It didn't really catch my attention too much. Uh, I do know that there's a lot of characters, and I probably didn't, I probably only played with maybe like five different characters, and I just kind of got bored of the gameplay itself. A lot of cool ideas. Uh, it's made by Gearbox, the team behind Borderlands. Uh, if you've played Borderlands and really like it, their crazy sense of humor mixed with the kind of comic booky style of uh, graphics and everything. Uh, that's a lot of what you get in Battleborn. I noticed the uh, when when I was watching some trailers, I noticed that the the cutscenes are actually anime style, which is pretty cool, or like cartoon style. Did I just I just broke a, a third wall right there saying cartoon over anime? <clears throat> oh, so, you know, hurt me. I don't know. Whatever. Uh so everything in the game seems pretty cool. It's just the execution of the ideas and bringing those ideas to life and uh, making them competitive. I don't know. It just seemed like the the characters didn't really. To me, they didn't really flow that well. And getting a kill, I don't think I got one kill on the beta just because it felt like it was impossible to get a kill. Kind of like Smite. Like me, I think I have both Paragon and Smite playthrough. Yeah, I have both playthroughs of those on the channel. And you'll see, when I try to get a kill, nothing happened. <laughs> it was like, you're hurting him, you're hurting him, you're hurt, you're dead. You hurt him, you hurt him, you're dead. I don't know. Uh, it was kind of weird, uh, just playing through it, and I, I guess that's what really turned me off from Battleborn overall was just the the execution of I can't do nothing. And once I got into that feeling of I can't do nothing, it was over. I was done. I was just looking for the next thing to do. The last game to get into is Overwatch. Everybody's really loving. Overwatch. It has dropped a bomb on the console industry. Uh, is just really lit up like a like a firework in the sky. I don't know. I'm t- I, that sounds corny as hell. What can you say about Overwatch that hasn't already been said about how cool it is? Awesome characters. Very very well done story trailers for all the characters. There is no story mode in the game. Which I think uh, Battleborn kind of has the better idea of adding kind of a story mode in there. I'm not quite sure what they do with the story mode. Like I said, I only played the beta of it. But uh, Overwatch, who knows? Maybe in time we'll get a maybe a little miniature story mode on there. 
But overall, the competitive nature of the game has been more than enough to make up for it. Just the influence in esports that it has been gaining and has gotten already is crazy. To me, it feels like... Um, <laughs> It feels like Overwatch is actually picking up where kind of Call of Duty is leaving off. It hurts to say because I'm a big Call of Duty guy myself. I really do, you know, I've, I've had a lot of years of really loving the Call of Duty scene, loving all the uh, the people that play in the Call of Duty scene, all, all the teams and everything. Uh, you know, I don't know them personally or anything. I just got love for what they've done for the console. Uh, sure genre and also, you know, how esports is made. Uh, just games like Call of Duty, like Overwatch, uh, like CSGO in, into the mainstream. Uh, so, yeah, Overwatch. I mean, like I said, characters, the stories behind the characters. There's a lot of thought put into it. And a fun fact that I've heard from other streamers that I've been watching, Overwatch started as kind of like a MOBA. It started as it was going to be like another Smite or, or you know something on those lines. And... Then it turned into another type of genre game, maybe a fighting game. I'm, I'm not quite sure what it was, uh, or maybe it was just a platformy story game or something. And then it ended up landing in the shooter genre, which, hey, kudos to those guys. You know, Blizzard going from World of Warcraft to first person shooters. And they have, you know, just gone tenfold into it, really putting some uh, some good work, good thought process, and good execution. And that's when you know the game is really good because you you have the ideas there. And then when the execution is good, it just brings a whole, you know, the, it controls really well. It plays very slow on the consoles, I know, but it plays very, very nice and fast-paced on the PC. Uh, I tried to play on my PC. I couldn't. But everybody that I watch that plays it, they all play it on the PC. <laughs> so now, now one thing I've been noticing is the hero shooters now are starting to suffer the fate of comparison syndrome. Now, comparison syndrome is like comparing Call of Duty to Battlefield, even though Call of Duty is an arena shooter and Battlefield's a, like a simulation shooter, totally different genres of shooters. Uh, but the more appropriate one that I've always found is Call of Duty versus CSGO. Uh, I don't like to say versus. Call of Duty compared to CSGO because those two games really feel like they're they're more arena-style military shooters. Uh, I do got love for both of them. They got weapons in there that I, that I really do like. Call of Duty's taking some map design uh, ideas off from CSGO uh, and probably some gun ideas also. Like Call of Duty is like the... I, I would say the, the console evolution of CSGO, uh, old school Call of Duty. I'm not talking about jetpacks and everything of you know, the newer stuff, but um, that's what I find like Overwatch and Battleborn and also Lawbreakers. And there's another one called Paladin, Paladins, yeah, Paladins, uh, which is I don't know. There's, there's a whole controversy around it. It's it's really really similar to Overwatch, even though everybody was like, oh, it was in development before Overwatch. Kind of the same thing as what happened between Call of Duty and Titanfall. That's what I'm seeing there. It doesn't really matter which one was in development first. It doesn't really matter that they both, you know, share very, very similar stuff. Uh, even, even the theme song is very similar. Even the trailer was very similar. Yes. Okay. Uh, but, you know, they're both going to be on the market. I think one is free to play. One's, you know, uh, Overwatch... Uh, you gotta pay for. I think Paladins is free to play. I'm not you know, don't quote me on it. I'm not quite sure. You can check it out. That's one thing that I think kind of hurts games in the long run. Uh, it's good for sales, you know, uh, with the fan base at first, but it hurts everything in the long run when you start saying this one's better than that one and that one's better than this one. Uh, if you look at things overall and see what games do in that games always they have always music even does it movies do it 
every form of entertainment, you know, borrows ideas from one another. And I know I've also been one to say on my videos of like, well, that's a copy of that and everything. And I've really tried to, you know, watch myself for saying that, make myself better also, uh, because I do know that it's going to happen and it's going to happen a lot. It's just something that does happen. Uh, is ideas you know being dropped into other games and everything? Sometimes the ideas being dropped into other games are actually a really cool thing. Like Star Trek, for instance, the new free-to-play Star Trek game uh, has ideas from Mass Effect being brought over, but Mass Effect got the ideas first from the Star Trek movies and TV shows. So it's kind of like it's like full circle all the way around, which is awesome. But how it's going to like the comparison syndrome, how that's going to negatively affect is. If you are a fan of, say, Battleborn, or you're a fan of Lawbreakers, which I think a lot of people are going to be fans of Lawbreakers when it finally drops on PC, uh, there's going to be this big fan war battle. I can already tell you, because this is how the internet works. This is how people work. They're just hardwired to do this. I like this one. I like that one. And we're going to fight it out. Nah. Now, for Lawbreakers, that is could potentially sink the game just in the fact that Overwatch has already been established. It's already big in the esports scene. Uh, it's still rising bigger, but it is definitely dropped with a big intent of being a big player in the esports scene. Now, what does that mean for Lawbreakers? If it is not perfect, and if it does not deliver 100% from the get-go, from the very first day it launches, and everybody's going to dismiss it as being just another clone of Overwatch and a knockoff. Not fair. Not fair, guys. You got to look at what the game brings to the table. Is there any swinging action in Overwatch? Well, what happens if Overwatch brings another character in that can swing? Then you're going to be saying that Overwatch took it from Lawbreakers. Again, ideas get borrowed back and forth. Come on now. As I've already hit on a couple times now in the video, why is Overwatch so damn popular? It's just like, uh, for me, personally, I think Overwatch, when, when, I, when I jump into Overwatch with a character like Reaper, with a character like, I know, yes, I'm that Reaper guy. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's just when you jump in there with your favorite character and you start wrecking shop and you start having the character kind of like part of the reason why I like playing Reaper so much is because when I jump in there and I start doing some crazy work, we, you know, you, you jump into the middle of the objective zone. There's multiple enemies around you. And next thing you know, die, die, die. And all of a sudden you have like six kills up on the board or something. It's like, whoa, my character just did that. I just did that with my character. Me and my character are badass. So, or if you're a healer, you know, maybe sometimes there's there's people that really like to play a healer role. Good ups to you, you know. You help, you know, guys like me that like to run to the objective zone like crazy, man. You you help us survive all the time. You help us, you know, get the objectives and everything. Without, I I've definitely learned my lesson and noticed that on Overwatch more than other games, if you don't have somebody healing, at least one maybe two people healing on a six man team it's, it's six right five six i don't know i just i i get thrown into a lobby and play play the game but uh, uh, if you don't have at least one or two healers it's going to make the game significantly harder which means the team play and you know me i'm a lone wolf i don't like to play with teams all that much at all so going into it you know and if you have the the character with the healer role to them and everything and then you are actually looking over people and you actually feel like you you did something even with a healer character a character that doesn't really do damage but helps out the team you know giving them health bonuses and upgrades and and, and bringing them back from the dead or whatever uh, <laughs> And also, even the defensive guys, like, uh, I, I think it's Tribune. I don't, I don't play a lot of defensive. I played a lot of assault guys. I'm sorry if I get these, you know, the names mixed up or the characters wrong. Ah, don't hurt me. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, going in there with the shield up, and then you whack people with this. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. It's fun, man. It's it's just the ideas came together with the execution. Uh, it's simple. It's this. It's a familiar first-person style game, but with awesome stuff to look at. 
and and it keeps you on your toes, especially when you have that clock counting down and you're just about ready to go into overtime and then you're in the overtime and your team just steps up to the plate and helps you, you know, do your thing. Awesome feeling. And to me, that kind of goes back to the old familiar kind of Call of Duty feeling uh, or CSGO feeling when you got the bomb planted and, you know, you're looking around. And if you die, that's it. You're done. It's, it's just that adrenaline rush. And that's where the execution comes in so perfect with Overwatch is that the, the adrenaline rush is so big time there. All right. So we're going to wrap up this video. I've been talking for a while. You know, that's what I like to do is talk about, you know, the things I really like and, uh, and also give over overviews. So yeah, talk about things that I really like and also give you guys a little bit of a thought process on, uh, on what I think about games that maybe I don't like as much, but how, uh, or, or little parts of games I don't like as much that I, you know, the parts I do like and everything. So we're going to end this video out with this right here. If you like the video, you can hit that thumbs up. You can share it around. Uh, I will have comments on once again for this video, just like I did with the last Let's Talk. Uh, so if you guys want to drop a comment, uh, if a couple of you guys and girls in or that watch the channel want to talk about what I just talked about in the video a little bit, go ahead and leave a comment or two. And as always, of course, if you subscribe to the channel, it's going to make sure that you stay tuned for all new videos coming soon.